25 lessons, the full. As we come up to 181 full today, starting in Galatians 3, 1. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. And I'm working on putting this in book form. Got editing and everything to do. I'll let you know the details, but chapter 3, verse 1. Oh, foolish Galatians. Uh-oh. Remember we read in Matthew that Jesus said, Woe unto you, holy man, a fool. Well, evidently that can't be the church age. And let me find it here real quick. Let's go back to Matthew. Uh, Matthew 5, 22. But I say to you, who serves angry with his brother without a co shall be in danger of judgment. But whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of counsel. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Now, when we run to Galatians chapter 3, verse 1, all foolish Galatians. Now, are you going to say Paul's going to hell for calling someone a fool? Well, evidently, the fact is, when we look at Matthew chapter 5, that's in a whole different dispensation. Matthew 23, 17, ye fools and blind, which is greater? And whether it's greater? You know who called someone a fool there? Jesus. And the problem is with most people when they go running into the gospel of Matthew, it's not church age doctrine. Matthew can apply spiritually, but not doctrinally. And it'll be signs in the heavens and in the earth and earthquakes and places like that. Oh, it's happening, it's coming. It's talking about the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ, not the rapture. So, old foolish Galatians, and this is who the book is written to, the Galatians. Let's see what Paul has to say. That you should not obey the truth. Now, Galatians is written to a, a church in Galatia, Christians. You know, Paul says, number one, for them being fools, you don't obey the truth. What is the truth? Sanctify them through thy word, thy word is truth. John 17, 17. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was God. They're not obeying Jesus. And if they're not obeying the truth, then they are obeying a lie because the opposite of truth is lie. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ, there he is, has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. And the Galatian church has had the law come in. Somebody brought in saying, you got to do the law, you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do this, you got to do that. Paul says, you're a fool. That's not the doctrinal teaching. That's not the doctrinal account in the church age today. We're not under the works of the law. We're under the grace of the finished work of Jesus Christ. And anybody comes up to you, well, I'm good. I gotta burn candles, I gotta go out, pedal, whatever. I got to, I got to, I got to, I got to. They're putting you under a work salvation, which is not today. And you know what? You're a fool. You're a fool. Three, three. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, the Holy Spirit, and ye now made perfect by the flesh. Now again, the Galatian church has had the law come in. You have to do the law. But let's look at this. You've begun in the Spirit. You're saved by the Spirit. You're born again. And you turn to the flesh. And the churches today of the world, of the world, have gone to fleshy, carnal pleasures of evangelism. Today, you got the VBS, you know, you got the bounce houses, and you got toys for and treats and fun and game that's to be used to evangelize the young children it's carnal and it's fleshy and it's not the way the bible prescribes and you cannot use the world in the flesh 
What? Are you so foolish to think that carnality in the world is going to bring people to Jesus Christ? And every year you got to updo your VBS from last year because you can't entertain the kiddies with the same garbage from last year because that's not as thrilling. And now you got to entertain the kiddies of all the churches, all denominations are doing VBS. So your VBS has to be bigger than their VBS. And you still got the 10 minutes Bible, 20 minutes arts and craft, 15 minutes of singing songs that have nothing to do with the Bible. And then uh, a 15 minute play. And then most of the time playing games. And you are foolish when you are saved, born again, and you are walking right in the ways of God, in the Word of God. You are foolish when you leave that and go about the flesh. Demas was foolish. Paul says, Demas has forsaken me, going back to Thessalonica. When you have gone out and witnessed whatever public ministry you have, and you have given it up for the world and for family and whatever, for career, the Bible marks you as a fool, being foolish. Keep going. Backsliding is foolish. When you're doing that which is right and you go backwards to the flesh, that's foolish. Ephesians 5.4. Ephesians 5 4. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. And, oh, I'm in Galatians, excuse me. Ephesians 5 4. You're not under the law. That's an error by me. Ephesians 5 4. Neither. Filthiness, then we understand what filthiness is. Filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, joking, practical jokes, which are not convenient, but rather giving to, of thanks. Instead of being foolish, give thanks to God. Foolish talking. Of no point idleness, and Jesus said that every idle word, every man shall give an account thereof. When you talk about things of no value for God in Jesus Christ, I don't care if it's entertainment, I don't care if it's sports, I don't care a realm of television, or if it has nothing to do with the Bible and Jesus Christ, it's idleness, it's foolishness, and it gives God no glory and you're a fool in foolishness. And the Bible, Paul writes to the Ephesians, don't do it. Rather than just give thanks to the Lord. I've got nothing to say. Thank you, Lord God, for everything you've given me. Hey, gold team, didn't you catch that ball game? Who cares about that ball game? That ball game will have nothing to do when we're in New Jerusalem. You see that movie this weekend that came out that have nothing to do with Jesus Christ, will not honor Jesus Christ. And probably lift up the name of Jesus as a cuss. And many people, when they go to church, before church service and after churches, they talk idle talk, they talk foolish talk that has no value. Hey, uh, black and white, there it is. You don't like it? Take it up with God. 15, verse 15. See them that you walk circumspectly. Look around, be prudent, not as fools, but as wise. Now there's the proverb. Here's a fool. What counters the fool? The wise. Prudent people walk circumspectly. They walk with prudency. They do right. Fools do not do right. The Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil. Our walk, our talk, our eyes, our ears, our feet are to have the proper ways of God. If it is not, it is foolish, and you're a fool. Now, how many times have we done that? How many times have I had idle talk? Many. So I guess I'm foolish, and I am, and I need to confess that sin. How many times have I gone from the Spirit and walked in the flesh, backslidden? Many times. 
I need to repent of my sins and get right with God and try to avoid that. How many times have I walked as a fool and doing that which is not right and walked wayward? Many times. And I need to confess my sins and get right. Boy, when we're looking at 180 fool, four times fool shows up in the Bible and foolishness and fools and all that. I'm not all these fools, thank God, but I am some of them to my discredit. And I cannot ever say I am not a sinner because when I look at the study of fools, I am sometimes the fool in the eyes of God. Sometimes in the eyes of God, I've done foolish. I got foolishness. And what we studied 184 times, my ears, my eyes, my nose, my mouth, my hands, and my feet have done foolish things. Not all the fools, but just being one fool in the Bible is not making one sin makes you a sinner. And there's one thing we can all probably agree on, I hope, is if there's anything that we have done fool, foolish, foolishness, is this thing called our tongue in our mouth. We've all had idle talk. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And what does a fool play, pay for you? The wages of sin is death. And that is written for Christians. I'm going to die because I'm a fool. <laughs> Not all 184, but some of them. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Being a fool is a sin. 515. All right, now 1 Timothy 6, 9. 1 Timothy 6, 9. But they that will be rich. I want to be rich. I want the corporate ladder. I want the money. I want the position. I want the checks. They that will be rich. And this is written to Christians. Fall into temptation. To steal, deceive, cheat, lie, skip church, not be a Christian, do foolish things. And a snare was a trap. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Lust is coveting. Which drowned men in destruction and perdition. Drowning in debt. If you have that will to be rich, that is your desire. You're gonna fall, you're gonna fall into some lust and coveting that is not natural and is against God. And you will do those lusts and coveting to get more of that money. You will deceive, you will swindle, and you will lie to get more of that money. And that ought not to be. Now listen, get a paycheck, and if God promotes you higher, and then God promotes you higher, then amen, glory to God. If you did it honestly, you did it with proper character, and God has given you as a blessing that you have showed yourself right and proper. Well, amen, glory to God. But I know a used cars man that's that swindled a fellow Christian. And there are plenty of people out there who are Christians or businessmen, and from their character and what they do, think I will go to a lost man and do my business with, and not with you, Christian brother in the Lord. And there's too many Christians like that. Professing Christians that have defiled and deceitful working practices. So they can get rich and get money. And they will show themselves in foolish coveting. You know, I'm going to get me that big book. It's that rich man in, in the gospel. Oh, I, I'm going to tear down my barns. Look how great I am. I'm going to build bigger and greater. And God says, thou fool, your soul is required tonight. Now, written to save people, you're not going to lose your soul. Oh no, if you got that big yacht, that big mansion, and you miss out on the crowns and rewards and the inheritance of Jesus Christ, that's foolish. When you're up in heaven, you ain't got no crowns, but I had a yacht. What's a yacht? It, 
Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> I had a mansion. We got mansions over here in New Jerusalem. What was your mansion? Oh, I forgot. It's not the toys that you have when you die. It's the rewards, the crowns, and the inheritance you get after you die for serving the Lord. That plain and simple. 2 Timothy 2.23. 2 Timothy 2.23. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do strip, do gender strife. Well, that's a bad word today, gender. Comes forth. Where's those questions? Oh, where did... How did Noah get all the animals in the ark? Where did Cain get his wife? Is there a rock that God cannot move? I had a guy the other day, Saturday, I was street preaching, and I was done, came up to me, and he's arguing the Bible with me. He wants me to answer Bible questions, but he himself said that Paul's a liar, and since Paul's a liar, the Bible's a liar. Acknowledge that God and Jesus cannot, will not lie, but the writers of the Bible are liars, so you, the Bible can't be correct. Because it wasn't personally written by God and Jesus Christ. So how can I give you a Bible answer if you don't believe the Bible? And he got angry with me because I wasn't going to answer him. And I said, listen, any proper answer I give you, any lying answer I give you, you're not going to believe because you don't believe where the answer source is. So I ended the conversation and, you know, just packed everything up and started walking to the car. And he's yelling at me. He's, hey, I can't. No, I'm not going to do with your, your questions because I can't. Now, I have had plenty of people come up to me or I've gone to them and they got serious questions and they got proper questions. And those you can do with the Bible, Peter says, be ready to give answer. There are questions of value and then there are questions of foolishness. And Satan has out there somewhere... In the, in the heart of these people, they know the file cabinet of the stupid questions they ask. And all you're going to do with those stupid questions is you're going to waste your time where you could be dealing with somebody else. And they're only coming to waste your time. Now, the perfect way to find out when somebody's got a question coming like that is say, well, okay, let's put that question aside. I mean, you can answer it, but let's get to a good question. May I, may I ask a question in order to answer your question? If you were to die tonight, would you would you go to heaven, or do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Now, that's an important question. And listen, if you've gone the way, and, and listen, he's listened, and he's heard the gospel, and he may not get saved, but I mean, listen, he's listened to you, and he's looked at the Bible verses, he's read the Bible verses, and he's listened to you with the Bible verses. And he didn't get saved. Then say, you know what? Listen, be proper. Where did Cain get his, get his wife? Well, the comical answer is he got it from his father-in-law, which was from Adam. And there was no law, like there was no law for murder. And you explain to him. After you pose your question of seriousness, then, you know, just spend a little time, answer his question. But if they're not even going to listen to you about salvation, they're not going to listen to you with the truth. They're sure not going to listen to you when you tell them the truth about a question they're asking because they just want to waste your time and do giggles and mock. I've had both avenues. And the ones that come to mock and all that, just let them go. Let them go. Titus 3.3. 3. Now, when I, when I do the book, it's not everything I'm saying. I'm, I'm reading my notes, reading the scriptures. I'm adding to more than what's in the book. The book has notes. I'm giving more. It would be great, you know, to get the book, read, and write down notes that I'm saying that, that are with you, for you. Titus 3.3. 3. For we Christians ourselves, Paul, also were sometimes foolish. 
disobedience, deceiving, serving divers, lust, pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. I was a fool before April 21st, 1987, when I got saved. I did remarkable foolishness. As a child growing up, I was in complete foolishness. Oh, the foolish things I did as a child. I can imagine how many times my mom just shake her head like, oh, boy. I don't know how God's keeping that guy alive, that kid alive. And one of these days, I'm going to kill him. I, say, I mean, my poor mom. I thank God she's saved today. And boy, she, when she raised me, whew, that was full time and overtime taking care of me as a child. But we've all been foolish. But can I say it again? 187 times we looked at fool in the Bible. Have we not also been fools saved? I have. I've learned much from these studies to say, hey, you know what? That was me. A fool. Titus 3.9. But avoid foolish questions again in genealogy. So... We're ordered twice. And somebody comes up to you question, mockery, throw out the lifeline. Throw out a question about Jesus and salvation. If he's mocking, if he wants to waste your time, he's not going to have anything to do with it. But if he wants to learn from God, it, it may not be a stupid question for him. I mean, when somebody comes up to you and say, well, you know, how on earth could Jesus be virgin born? That may be a very serious question. Somebody comes up to you and says, well, why did Jesus die on the cross? That's not a foolish question. Why are we here? The, the answer is in Revelation 4, the last verse. We're here to praise God. Those are not stupid questions. Those are questions that say, hey, let's sit down and talk. Like I said, last week, I had a guy go, oh, isn't Paul a liar? I said, we're all liars. And I know Paul is lying because I have lied. He says, I'm the chief of the sinners. And since Paul lied, well, the whole Bible's a lie. Well, you can't go that avenue. So, when it comes with questions, you really got to feel out the person. You got to know their motive. Because it may be a foolish question to you, but in their eyes, they're not scorning. If I came to you before April 21st when I got saved, if I came to you and said, Sir, you're in a public ministry somehow, you come to me, whatever. You you have the gospel, you're safe. You come to me, and I come to you, or you come to me and say, Sir, I come from a church where Jesus is nailed to that cross. I don't understand it. Now you may think, well, it's, you see, my thing, when I when I grew up in the, in the Roman Catholic Church, was we had the Easter. Three days and three nights, Jesus rose out of the grave. Amen. I heard that. I heard the gospel of the Catholic Church. You can too. But what I couldn't understand growing up was, when I look at that priest, and whatever he did, I look above his head, at the church I went to in New London, Connecticut, and I look above his head, I believe all churches of the Catholic, and the Catholic church would have him, I know Catholic, because I've been in three or four different Catholic churches. And I'm not mocking the faith right now, I'm saying when I look above his head, I see Jesus nailed to the cross. And when I visit my aunt's house, she would have Jesus on a cross on her necklace. And what I couldn't understand as a Catholic and young was, how can Jesus come out of the grave Easter, let's say Catholic, the Catholic faith, Easter, which is not true, but the Catholic faith I came in, this is the disbelief I, I, did, I had. But if he came out of the grave on Easter, the Catholic Church, then why is he still nailed on that cross? 
what happened that he was nailed on that cross at Calvary, yes. I knew the state I knew the stations of the cross. From Pilate's judgment hall to the you know, they had different stages. I think there's seven. I don't remember. And they had them all portrayed in, in clay and marble and all that, but I was how do you get back nailed to that cross? And I was always in the assumption that Jesus did not sit at the right hand of the Father in the Catholic Church. He had ascended to go back to that cross. And if I, and sir, if, I, if somebody came up to you and say, well, listen, why is Jesus still nailed to that cross? For somebody like me, that, that is a very serious question because I got questions. Now, not always how did Noah get all the animals in the ark? Maybe he saw a child's book somewhere and he picked it up and it started getting him thinking about God. And he may not be mocking. You know, yeah, God told this man Noah to build an ark and every two of every animal, though there were some of sevens. How would God get all those animals? And it may not be a foolish question. The fact is, if it's not mockery, that question may lead from Noah to the cross. Until they're getting saved. Because remember, now, if, it, if the question is serious, you can get those animals through the door of the cross where God shut that door. And you can bring that person with that question to the door of Jesus Christ where the sheep come in and are signed, sealed, and delivered. So don't count every question foolish. You got to know the person, the attitude, and the conduct, and the character, how they ask. 189. 1 Peter 2.15. 1 Peter 2.15. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to silence, the ignorance of foolish men. Oh, I call it stupid. The word of God is the shut up fool. You know what's remarkable about that? And I said that I didn't do folly, which I did folly. And we're going to study folly. I get it printed up. But 1 Peter 2.15, the word of God says, shut up fools. 189, that's the last place fool shows up in the Bible. And what is the first, the last place that fool shows up in the Bible? Let the word of God shut them up. This is the word God tells me as a Christian when, I, when I'm foolish, I've sinned against God. You know what the Bible says to tell me to shut up with that foolish and stop that foolishness? If I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins. You know what the Bible says when I am foolish and do foolish things and play the fool? The Bible says I'm going to be judged in the judgment seat of Christ. And that foolishness, that folly, that, that being a fool is going to be wood, hay, or stubble and it's going to burn up with ashes. That's what the Word of God says. And if you want to continue as a Christian in your foolishness, and say, Stanley, I don't care about these lessons. I don't care what you said. I think you're a fool. Then you're not listening to the word of God. And you have not been listening to the word of God. Now this study, this is the 25th study. They're on YouTube. They're on SoundCloud. And hopefully they're out there. And you can use these videos. Listen to them. Study them. You can give them to your friends. You can put them on your website. There are no copyrights. If you mess with them, if you dub my voice, if you cut and splice, that's between you and God. I just ask, go ahead and get this word out and get people to learn. I give you all free rights. As we close right now, we're going to pick up again next week. But we finished the full study. Next week, we're going to do maybe, maybe one or two more studies on folly. But the very last foolish, foolish men, God says men are foolish, 189 times, 
God says, let the word of God, let the word of God put them to silence. The first foolishness was, foolishly, was Laban saying to Jacob, you, you did foolishly by not letting me say goodbye to my family. Then he showed up again the second time. And then foolish people and unwise, you require the world foolish people and wise. There's a foolish nation. We've gone through many. We're going through the whole book of the King James Bible. And I may have missed one or two. I'm a sinner. I'm not perfect like God. I, I may have missed that. If I did. Actually, I think last week or the week before, I actually did see that we missed one totally. We missed one. I can't say we've done this complete. All right. Yeah, there was one last week or the week before. Yeah, look, this is it. Romans chapter 10. I may have missed others. Romans chapter 10, verse 19. I believe I forgot this one. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy with them that are no people. And by a foolish nation will I anger you. Again, that's that's in that's written in the book of Moses. That's us, that's Gentiles. I believe we we studied that. Gentiles who are outside the will of God, the Bible says is foolish. Christians are found to be foolish. Before you pat yourself on the back, how well are you doing? And if you have been a fool in foolishness and you need to confess your sins and get right with God. 